in your life, have you ever seen a player knee another player after a fight? Not in the UFC. I'm pretty sure I have, but I cannot think of it. Like someone was like, Ryan Reeves did this literally last year, and I feel like I would have remembered it. Jeff Merrick would have that... remembered it. Yeah. Because like, he knows every I'm, fight. I, I'd be very surprised because that, that seems like the sort of thing that Ryan Reeves very does not have to do. <laughs> he is perfectly capable of beating you up with his hands instead of his knees. But uh, Marcus Felino, like that's people talk about like the heat of battle and seeing the red mist and everything. Dude, what a what a wild thing to do. What a crazy thing to do. Like I here's here's what I don't want to come out of player safety today for Marcus Felino to get less than Marchand. <laughs> Dude, that's a crazy thing to do. And he's lucky it didn't go really really bad. What if he cold cocks Adam Lowry and he's out with a UFC knee to the head? We're talking 20 games. Well, I was looking at it and thinking, Jason Spezza did this in a play to, uh, I forget who it was earlier this season, got six games. Pionk. 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 Yeah. And yes, the Leafs had every right to be mad at Pionk and the refs let the game get out of control, but you don't do that. That's the wrong move. You shouldn't do that. Yes. Yeah. And thankfully, Pionk has, is okay, but you still, like, it's terrible. Yes. I think you gotta if 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 Spezza doing that is six games. I think Felino's got to be four to four to five, doesn't it? Because the thing with Spezza is it happened during a play, and you know at least with Felino and Lowry, I guess the argument could be they were in a fight and it was at the end. But I almost, I almost feel like that might make it more dangerous because the helmets are off and he's on the ground. It's a more conscious decision to me. That's how I see it. Spezza was going for. A uh, hit that was probably going to be bad, and it was out of retaliation, and it was out of vengeance, and because of the change in body positioning, it went wrong. Now it's his fault it went wrong, mm -hmm. but he didn't quite mean to do that. You know what I mean? Yep. Felino, <laughs> he sets the whole thing up. He grabs him, cocks the knee back, and wham. That's that's insane. You can't do that. And and next time he does it, I can't give him a lifetime achievement award. <laughs> this is a what an opportunity. You got to grab George Paris. So you're saying you got to grab it now. You got to grab it now. You you got to, you know, sometimes you don't think you have to explain certain things to people. You know, Sean, we didn't think we had to explain that you can't face Martin Brodeur and blind him for an entire play. But now that it's out there, <laughs> we have to create a whole rule to say that you're not allowed to do this. To this day, right. I right. still think Sean Avery doing that is one of the most wicked things I've ever seen in hockey. I loved it. I loved it everything genius. about that. I still genius. don't understand why it's a penalty. I don't, touch yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. For context with the Felino kneeing uh, ground and pound play, he got um, cold cocked by Brendan Dillon at the blue line. Like, yeah. that's what started. There's a brawl about 12 minutes into the game, and it's because Dylan comes over, and he doesn't he doesn't hit him in the head, but he went for it, and he, and he hits him uh, shoulder to kind of shoulder, and then a, a fight starts out. And then Adam Lowry, who um, grabs... I forget who he grabs initially. I think it's Felino who he grabs, he grabs initially. Uh, yeah. Uh, who's, who's coming Greenway over. Grabs yeah. Greenway grabs Dylan. Yeah, uh, Greenway grabs Dylan. Lowry grabs Lowry Felino. comes over, and he... Grabs Felino, so we uh, by the back of the neck, like chokes him. Yeah. Like that would be a suspension on its and own. And then, and then that fight that happens, Lowry kicks Felino's ass in that fight. They have a whole brawl there, and there's two different two fights going on at once. And Lowry wins this fight here that Adam's watching yeah. on his laptop. Lowry Felino's... wins it easily, and then Felino at the end when they're both on uh, grappling towards the end of the fight. Uh, Felino yeah, then is. gets on him. Well, Felino got some. Got, yeah, he he gets got, some good rights. He did, he, I shouldn't say kick his ass, but they were both competitive in the fight. And then in the end, Felino, who initially got rocked, that started this whole brawl, ends with the knee. Am I mistaken in saying have Have we ever seen somebody? So if I'm Steve, if I'm if I'm gonna fight Jesse, mm -hmm. a fight I know I'm gonna oh, lose. Oh, don't do that! Don't do that! Yeah, he's got the he's got the wingspan. He's got the size. He's got the athleticism. We wouldn't be in the weight cl same weight class, so it would. So, work. but if I were to grab Jesse and I, I'm trying to avoid the screen and grab yeah. him by the scruff of the neck, yeah. have we ever seen mm -hmm. somebody get suspended for that? 
the, it's a, a horse Scruff collar the tackle the is what they call yes. it in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can't remember a time where I've even seen it. No, Lowry should fa- uh, he should he should be fined kind of for the aggressive play that he pulls on. Because he Foligno did start the fight to grab him into the fight. Yeah, that's, like he is that's the instigator. Dirty. He's the instigator. Yeah, hundred percent. So hundred percent. This is now you know just as a Leaf fan, just because it happened between our two teams. This is the second uh, Jets game, at least at least the second Jets game that we've seen get out of hand. But well, I'm, I'm looking stink. at. <laughs> Jesus, Adam. they suck. But I'm I'm looking at well, they won this game. But okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at the flavor of both games, and I'm not I'm not putting this on the Jets. But I'm looking at this, and I'm and this will never happen. So I don't even know why I'm suggesting it. But did Wayne Gretzky have a point where if you fight, you shouldn't be allowed to play for the rest of the game? Because what happened here was two guys who fought, fought again. Because it's not over. There's hurt feelings and everything. And then the weirdest thing that hockey does is after these two men fist fight, you put them in a box together for five minutes, which is really 10 or 15 with commercial breaks and shit, where they get to say mean things to each other, hurt each other's feelings some more. And then go back to a contact sport where they are free to fight again with little to no consequence. Should fighting be uh, automatic ejection in the NHL is what you're asking. I'm going to say they're not going to do that. And Steve, Steve, you're right to to say to preface it with that because they let's be honest here. Baser instincts. They want that. Oh, yeah. They want that. They want yeah, hate. Like, like, uh, I uh, like here's the thing. Bren- Brendan Smith, who. Wayne Simmons fought in the Hurricanes game because he didn't like to hit on Kasha. He's they still not everyone is like Wayne, where they will exchange gentle words afterwards and yeah. get and give you a pat on the shoulder. You know, this is the one thing where maybe old school guys do have a bit of a point. Wayne and where, I went oh, to school together. How dare you say old school? I'm upset. No, 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 no. <laughs> the like, same age. No, no, but no, like no, when, when they say back when there was respect in the I know, game, I know, well, I know. I know. First of all, they would break sticks over your head. So let's let's lower our voices when it comes to that. But yeah. the the I feel like the the shoulder pat, the good job, tap on the bum, you know, great fight, and now we're friends. I feel like that is leaving the league. And fights, which are becoming more and more rare, are from a higher and higher percentage born out of genuine anger and hatred. And because of that, I think the cool down period should be, you don't get to play for the rest of the game. Yeah. The game misconduct for fighting thing. It won't happen until all the guys who fight uh, to boost the team's morale are out, you know, cause some guys just fight like Simmons they, sometimes it's just a fight because your team is down and you're trying to get everybody riled up and you fight for that reason. Like, there's a lot of that in hockey as well. And until those yeah. guys are kind of ushered out and it, the fighting is just a, a I hate this guy kind of thing, natural thing, then I don't think the game misconduct for fighting is ever going to come into play. I think you also have to look at this, guys. I think you do. When you're looking at the suspension, and I don't want to come across here that I'm diminishing what Marcus Foligno did because it's wrong. Oh, and he yeah, should be suspended. This is beside. But, we're but off that. Point. The Jets yes, have yes. played a bit of more of a rough and tumble style than I've ever seen them play before this year. They're a tough. A- team. And they have. But here's the thing: is they when I tell you they suck, they have three wins in their last ten since Maurice resigned. Paul Maurice resigned in, on December the seventh, sixteenth or seventeenth. They have won six games. This is a team in free fall. So part of the reason this brawl happened is because well, if you're not gonna, if we can't beat you, we're gonna fight you. That's the attitude that they've taken on a little bit here, I think. I think it's frustration. I think it's all of those things. I don't, I'm not saying that like Lowry went out there to intend to injure anybody or whatever. But I, I definitely think there's a little bit of, fine, we're going to lose, then I'm going to fuck you up. And sure, you can be a tough team. That's sure. what Marshan did. I, 100%. Yeah. I don't have anything wrong with that, being but a I, tough team if, I, you're, if you're not that skilled. I think, well, I, I, first off, I think they're, they're better than they've shown. Because they still are the Winnipeg know. Jets, I do. I do think they're better. Than I they saw jumped. them versus the Canadians. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, uh, I just, I just look at this and go, okay. Part of this, part of the reason this started is not because of 
Minnesota Winnipeg, it's the Jets having the season they're having. And the Jets to me have the makeup of a whole hum regular season team that can make noise in the playoffs if they make it. If they can they ride Connor Hellebuck's first. back all the way to it. Yeah. There's there's too much in the way. Like look at the log jam in that middle pack of the uh Western I, Conference. Yeah. They're not I don't think they're squeaking over no, Edmonton, they're not. Vancouver. They're not. It's no. Yeah. What is it, San Jose, Edmonton, Dallas. Dallas. Although, although let me throw this at you. They have played some of the least amount of games of anybody in the in the conference. They're yeah. seven points out of the last wild card spot currently held by Calgary. That is a lot. You got to, but you got half a season to catch. You got to kick out St. Louis, Calgary, Edmonton, Dallas, Dallas, San Jose, San Jose, Vancouver. Resurgent. Vancouver. Like one of those six Tough teams. Ask. I'm taking one of those six over Winnipeg. I'm right taking now. Calgary over all of them right now, which is Calgary's so hot. 